How are we going, everybody? Now the word's been out there that you've been dying for me and Craig, Craig and I, to get together, uh, and not as a relationship uh, in any sort of... Oh, let's, let's not go down there. <laughs> well, let's take it more serious. Okay, because every time I, I mean, come over... you're a over, good mate, but, you know... <laughs> love you, mate. Uh, I've, I've come to Craig's uh, to sit down and talk all things about soils and things like that, and about gardening, see how he's up, what, what he's up to, and just a bit of a... Uh, a bit of a catch-up. Yeah, a bit of a catch-up, I suppose, mm. and then discussion of what's happening, where are you at at the moment with everything. Mm. Uh, last time I came over, you were uh, working on soil and, mm. and another book. So you. I am, yeah. yeah. Look, um, for about the last three months now, um, I've been researching heavily mm. um, into soil, and it was mm. just by by chance that that uh, I got invited to do a, a, um, a webinar and it was sort of a bit obscure. Mm -hmm. um, so I looked in and I checked in with this, this particular uh, web webinar and it went for five days. It was five, a five day symposium on soil. Okay. And I sat there um, not really knowing what to expect initially and within about an hour my jaw had hit the bench. Really? I was gobsmacked. Yeah. Uh, all I thought I knew about soil was just about screwed up and thrown out, <laughs> okay. which was a bit. Which was a bit um, he hasn't had his medication. No, don't say that. No, it's true what you're saying. But yeah. It is. I yeah. mean, look, the obvious things I know about soil haven't changed. Yeah. But it's all the things I didn't know about soil, and I think most of us don't know about soil is what blew me away and how you know when I when I went to horticultural college. I mean. Soil growth mediums and fertility, excuse the dog. That's okay. Um, you know, were discussed, but there was no mention of the Life. importance of of fungi and bacteria and how mm. that re reacted with plants because it was not known then. I yeah. mean, bacteria and fungi were things that you treated. Yeah. They were not things you encouraged. Yes. So if you, you know saw, what I mean? So it was a whole. It's the typical thing where, sorry for cutting you off, talking about mushrooms, you know, people would email saying, Mushrooms is just appearing in my lawn everywhere. Mm. What do I do? Mm. Well, they're, they're coming. Them. Leave That's them. Good. Why, why are they coming? Yeah. Yeah. They're there because they're bringing off offspring. Yeah. So the fungi is in the soil. It's alive. Right. It's active. It's not going to hurt yeah. you. The mycelium, the stage that something fruits, mm. mushrooms are the fruit of yes. the mycelium. Yes. It's that network that's underneath mm. the ground. Mm. And it's, it's gone from its growth stage mm. into its um, reproduction stage. Okay. And it pops those... All right. Those up to repopulate. Exactly. So, Let's go back to the basics. Now. Yeah. So, so bacteria and fungi, as I say, were something that we were taught to treat, not to encourage. It's and, great. and and that was sort of a bit hard to get my head around because because what you know you know and mm. what you don't you don't until someone points it out. And I just sat there blown away. And the more I sat there and realised how little I actually knew about soil, and, and that comes about because. Technology has advanced so much mm -hmm. um, that there is now soil microbiologists, and and this is something that's been happening for the last ten years. But even more so now because of, as I say, technology, they're able to look and and get a greater understanding of the relationship with the sun's cooking me, the, the, the bacteria and yeah. the um, and the fungi and, and and its relationship with plants. So. Um, what, what uh, in short, what happens is that plants, you know, through photosynthesis, um, you know, they make sugars, simple sugars like polysaccharides, mm -hmm. and, and they store some of that, you know, along with the carbon that they take out of the atmosphere yeah. to build their structure and their leaves and what have you. Yeah. But some of that, about 30% of it, goes out through the roots of the plants yeah. into the feeding bacteria and fungi. And that relationship was never something that we knew about. Or understood how, how or it understood, worked. that's yeah. right. And it's more the fungal network in actual fact that that actually helps deliver all the things that the plants need in a soluble form. All right, I'm gonna dumb it down even more now. Everybody at home, just your common house, household gardener, um, got a little veggie patch or flowering garden bed or lawn even for that matter, mm. um, wanna feed their garden. So they go to the local garden supplies or chain store and say I need a fertiliser for my garden is a fertiliser for my citrus mm -hmm. and the first thing naturally what happens they pick up a bag a two and a half kilo bag of you know granulated fertiliser which mm -hmm. has all your NPK writing mm -hmm. on it it's a fast release not a slow release some of them exist as a slow release mm -hmm. but that's what they get generally 
-hmm. You know, yourself and I have been beating it, you know, beating the drum to death about soil, mm -hmm. um, compost, manures, mm -hmm. and all that. So we've got synthetic fertilizers, mm -hmm. organic fertilizers. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows where we stand with that. Yep. People who be applying this synthetic fertilizer, now they don't know about microbes and fungi. No. Like we sort of had an inclination that yep. something existed. How good or bad it was, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Where is it now for those who are still using synthetic fertilisers and what effect does that have on our soils? Well, synthetic chemical fertilisers yes. are really a no-no and, yeah. and they're a no because you disconnect the plant from the network in the soil Okay. because the plants need that soluble form of fertiliser. Mm. So the minute you disconnect the plant from that, it stops feeding the fungal network yes. and the bacteria okay. and they die off. So we're, we're basically killing off anything alive in the soil. Well, the big problem is that plants can only take up a small amount of the fertiliser that you apply in the soil. Mm -hmm. um, and, and what hap happens inherently is that because they're chemical, they bind with other elements or minerals in the soil. Mm -hmm. So anything unused, for instance, potassium or potash, mm -hmm. gets bound with other elements mm. and it then becomes unavailable yeah. to plants. And it's locked up, that's right. Plants can't just... Like I said, behind every mineral or, or, or element that, that a plant needs, there needs to be some sort of microbial interaction to make it soluble so the plants can take it up. Now, look, I'm, I'm taking out a bit of soil here. Yep. For those who've noticed it already, we've got a little Mi uh, it's microscope. It's an electron microscope. An electron yep. microscope. So you've got to plug it up to a USB port. Yep. And that lights. magnifies it. It sheds a light over the top of what you, the subject okay. you're using. And it magnifies it up to 1,650 times. <laughs> Have you stuck your finger underneath it? No, no, <laughs> I don't suggest you do no, either. No, I won't. Okay, so now what I want to do here is ask you, this is soil, mm -hmm. this is a little little piece of soil, a little nut of soil or whatever. It's an aggregate of soil. Aggregate of soil, is that yeah. the term we use, expression? Yeah. So, aggregate of soil, it yeah. could be a large aggregate or a small aggregate. Aggregate well, defines... Well, no, an aggregation is... A connection... A, a, no, well, it's it's the it's the particles that make up soil, soil. stuck together. So this is an aggregate is a, a, a heap of different particles. Correct. Different sizes, yeah. different types of soil. Sand, silt, and clay. They're the three things we have. Well, that's that's in the dirt. Dirt. Okay. In the soil, then yeah. we have humic material or humus material. Okay. And then we have the microbes and fungi and all those other bits and pieces. And if I come along and drop some synthetic chemical fertilizer on that, what will happen to that? Well, you probably find that a lot of the bacteria and fungi would either get burnt, mm -hmm. um, the, the microbes would certainly try and exit the, the, the soil yeah, pretty quickly. Left. Yeah. So we've, we physically, you know, visually can't see how it reacts. No. Well, maybe you can well, with you the can technology, I mean, but yeah. not in our case. No. But imagine now putting a, a synthetic fertilizer onto this. Mm. It'll be like flashing it with petrol or oh, acid. And to, a, to a degree. I mean, yeah. if, you, if you drop, uh, in fact, I, I, I've just finished listening to um, a podcast um, about earthworms mm. and and their importance. And you know, they're a microbe factory. Mm. They um, breathe microbes as, as they tunnel through the soil. Mm -hmm. Um, their intestines are basically on the outside of the, mm. the, the, the animal. Get out of here. They are. And, and they actually uh, populate... And I touch them. They, they populate the tunnels that they build with microbe food as they go about and forage yeah. for, um, you know, material to turn into humus. Because yes. that's... And they turn, they turn um, plant matter yeah. down into humus four times faster than any other decomposition process. So earthworms are a good thing to have. Oh yeah, of course. And and the the, the holy grail in the soil yeah. is if you've got one um, shovel full of soil and you've got twenty five worms in that shovel full, yeah, you're on you're, you're on right. fire. Beautiful. Yeah, your soil's doing well. So um, if you were to tip some urea, mm -hmm. which is a common is. thing yeah, in the soil, use yeah, in so the onto world. a worm, you'll see it writhe. It's it's just it, it's just it's about like kills salt it. on the, on the slug. Yep. Yeah. Correct. Basically. Correct. So, so everybody in all the farms that we spoke about, you know, in history, you know, post-World War II, who went into the synthetic world, mm -hmm. they've basically killed off yep. all, if not and, all... And, and what's happened, Rasili, is that when they first started to apply the NPK fertilisers, mm -hmm. um, high analysis um, mm -hmm. types, mm -hmm. um, they started off at, you know, X amount per square metre. Mm -hmm. And they're now up to 10 times that amount. It's progressively... So what, what ultimately happens is that it starts locking up in the soil and, and, yeah. and to get the same sort of results you got the last time, you have to apply more. 
Yeah, and because you've killed off the microbes that were feeding, now there's nothing in the soil that's feeding feed, your and soil. And it's completely reliant yeah. on the now, now, I asked you to do something for me uh, on the way. When you left Lethbridge, all right. Lethbridge yeah, and came here, yeah. yeah. how many insects did you count? I mean, consider factor in the time of day it was, I think it was about seven or eight only. Okay. I can guarantee you 40 or 50 years ago, if you'd have made that same trip, yeah. you probably would have had to maybe have stopped once at the very least to, to, to clean your windscreen <laughs> off. Okay? I've done that in the past. Yeah, that so, is true. I know what you're saying. So we were killing yeah. off the insect world. Yeah. So, so and, and that's that's the flying <laughs> insects, let alone yeah, yeah, the, ones the ones in the, the ground. Yeah. So, and that's directly related to soil. The health of our soil is directly and, linked to the health of our, our, um, our, our plants. The whole ecosystem. Our old, uh, human health yep. and the ecosystem. Totally, because... Uh, all relied on soil. If and you lose your soil's life, you lose your, your microbes, you lose your insects, then you lose your birds. Yeah, that's and, it. And the chain and, reaction and, and, continues. You know, whilst I, uh, one of the chapters in my book was talking about this very thing about mm. insects and so forth, that in Germany they had a 27-year study and they've come to the understanding that they, we've lost 75% of the flying insects. It's ridiculous. That's that's you know. Yeah, it's only the strong ones that are that are left. Yeah. So and it's not just about the pollinators, pollinating insects and stuff. Well, it's all the others. They become they're an integral part of the food web. Yeah. You know. So we really have to change w what we've been doing. To be honest. You know? so, what we're saying here, folks, and you've he heard me beat it to death. Um, feed the life in your soil. Feed them. You know, populate the microbes, yeah. the fungi. You need them yeah. to come to life. Otherwise, so, your so, plants can't yeah, really that's connect. Right. So, so um, you know, I'm feeding uh, the soil the, yeah. the new superfood that you've oh, got. Yeah. Yep. Um, but I'm not feeding the plants. I'm feeding the soil. Exactly. Um, if your plants you are hungry, the soil, yeah, that will you feed, feed your, your plants. plants. Exactly. And the microbes and and the composting insects and so forth will do that for you. Yeah. You know, the resist the, the temptation to turn soil over, yeah. I mean, it's in, embedded in us. You know, we, we, we've got well, a, a European background. I, to, I grew up watching my dad hoeing the garden. Yeah, exactly. Hard yeah. work, you know, yeah. get on the end of a fork yeah. and turn all your Kill soil everything over. In there. And guess what? Guess what you're doing? Yeah, you're destroying you're, well, the Well, you're, 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 you're destroying the complete um, Colony fungal of, network yeah, that you've got going on up. in the ground. Yeah. Now, I mean, I'll, I'll show you, you know, under a microscope, what I'm talking about now, these hyphae, which are they're they're a, they're part of the fungal network, mm -hmm. and without giving everyone a biology lesson, they're about one sixtieth. So we're looking at one at the moment now, the one we got on screen. Yep. Okay, so we can see that that that, that little grain of soil or aggregate of soil is made up of you said silt, sand, silt, silt and clay. And clay. And what we're looking at now is. Are all those little particles bonded together? And those little lines so, there, what are those lines? So, so they're hyphae. Yeah, and they so, are part of the networking? They're part of the mycelium. Mycelium, okay, so the mycelium being the fungi. Which, the fungi that you see, the and, white and, and string, that's, yeah, stringy and that's bits that come out. that's what to the root zone. So we can see called, that. Yep, so, we, so the root zone around a plant is called the rhizosphere. Yep, yep. So, and, yeah. and, and heavily populated yeah. are the bacteria and fungi because... If you think about it, they populate quickly around a root system yeah, yeah, they because they're going to get there's fed. There's business there. The business that's is it. on. Yeah. Th there's a marketplace. Yeah, 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 we're bartering here. That's it. And Sugar. the plant will call out for yeah. something and it's up to the fungi to yeah. go, right, let's go get that because I'm going to get fed in return. So how does the hyphae? Hyphae, yeah. How does that work? How do you mean how does it work? How, what does that do? Well, it solubilises the minerals. So the fungi that are living within those grains of soil that we can't, uh, sorry, and the microbes, yeah. can we see those microbes? Um, no, not not no. those. No, I can't get that down. Close so it's even smaller. So we're looking oh, yeah. through something that's one one thousand six hundred and fifty times yep. its size. Yep. And, and and in normal, I mean that's we're only just able to see it. That's how fine that is. And that's one sixtieth the width of a root hair. Not a root. That a little root strand hair that we see is there is one sixtieth. Yep. Now Correct. this other slide that we're looking at at the moment, you got what do you got there? It looks that's like a, a mite. It's a soil mite. You, how big is that? Well, a think one, about the one sixtieth of the size of a root hair. So, you know, it's probably half, uh, double the size of that, triple the size of that. Potentially, yeah. Potentially, yeah. and that's still tiny. What's that doing now? Well, it's just that, foraging. that's again, you, yeah, foraging and chewing up um, humic material. All that in that little grain. Yeah. So, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. But, but these are the things that that um, that worms will come along and, and eat. You know, the microbes that these 
these guys excrete. Yeah. You know, so it's it, it, it's a whole food web inside the soil that we really didn't know or understand how it existed. And it's all in this not even three millimetre diameter yeah, it's, grain. It's three pretty small. It is small. Yeah. So there's a world within the world within the world. Absolutely. And it just keeps getting smaller and smaller, yeah. but yet yeah. they are... And then, and then there's, of course, the, the bacteria and the viruses. V viruses also help in all of this because they switch on and off genes uh, within the bacteria. You know, so it's it, it, the more we look, the more we find that I can't believe us humans are so ignorant and naive. I suppose. Yeah, well, think about it. Next time you step foot on on, on the, the soil, what you're standing I'm on is just incredible. I'm just gonna. <laughs> <laughs> so, Unbelievable! I yeah. can't believe how small yeah. that is, and the fact that what well, we can't see the grain of um, clay no, because it's, it's so it's, it's, it's infinitely small. Yeah. But there's billions of them together which so, form that So the cluster. large particles are sand. Yeah. The next ones are silt. Mm -hmm. And then the smaller, smallest particles is clay. Uh, is clay. And it's all bound together, together. with, a, with a, um, a glue that's made by the bacteria okay. and fungi called glomalin. Glomalin. Yeah. So, and, glomalin? And that, that, glomalin? Glomalin. Glomalin. So that's where the word glue comes from. Well, sort of. Sort of? Yeah. yeah. But it's, I'm not sure that that's the botanical okay. uh, the, or the, uh, <laughs> oh, the, the Latin term, right. but yeah. It's but okay. glomalin is what sticks and makes that aggregate, and, and it does that so that the bacteria have got something to cling to. And they can, because when they we come can, along the water, they don't yeah. want to be washed off the yeah, root yeah, zone, yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Gotcha, so that's, gotcha. So, so healthy that's the body soil, agent. and that's, that's when you Do squash, squash up your soil and, and, and press it. And glomalin yeah. is what holds that, that together. together. That's perfect you know, texture. And, and of course the humus yeah. is most important, because that's what is the so dark humus rich. It's basically humans turned into compost. Well, no, humus is, is um, li living. <laughs> yeah. Just throwing it out there. Thanks so much. Yeah. Yeah. But, but let's explain what humus is. Yeah, well, humus <laughs> is, 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 is on the way to becoming soil. Yes. And is what plant or, or material, um, yeah. living material has been turned into. into. Yeah, so and it's, it's quite dark yeah. and it's sweet smelling. Sweet smell. And it's got yeah, plenty so of richness in it. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, living absolutely. organisms, yeah. that is what we're but saying. But it, it can take a long, long time um, to create you know, topsoil. Yeah. Do, do you know that we've 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 lost um, we we have lost quite a significant amount of our topsoil, mm. the world's topsoil. And in fact, in the last 50, 60 years, um, we've released about 133 billion tons of, of topsoil up into the air that's been blown away. And what's left is about 60 years worth of topsoil. What happens after 60 years? Oh, well, we're not going to be able to think about the about world's top, topsoil yeah. that is what grows all our food. Yeah. It's not only that, it, it filters our water, it, it stores some of our water. I mean, what makes, sorry, but I, I know it does all that and people must understand the, the importance of topsoil, but what happens when we do run out of topsoil? Well, I mean, you're, you're in trouble, we're in big trouble. I if mean, we don't what's underneath the topsoil? Down. Just clay, subsoil. Subsoil, which is, is inert, it's dead. Well, it's on the way to becoming so to soil, soil. But the, the but microbiology, once you kill the stuff in the microbiology... There's nothing there to break it down to bring uh, it to correct, life. Correct. So that's what's happening. So we are right, but it's not. It's riding faster than we can produce it. Yeah, yeah. So And all these new... And, and turning through. soil over and leaving it um, exposed. exposed to sun yeah. kills, kills off, off the microbiology. Well. And, and worst of all, it releases all the carbon that has been stored in soil. Yeah. Carbon does the heavy lifting. Yeah. Uh, the soil does the, car the, the heavy lifting for... Um, carbon sequestration, storage of, of, of carbon into, you know, a stable format in the soil. And when you turn that over, you oxidise it and, and it, it goes back out. up in the atmosphere. And, and you can't make or decrease the amount of carbon. Carbon's infinite. Yeah. yeah. It just exists in either in us, That's, in plants or soil yeah. or mm. in timber. Yeah. It's there. If you burn it, you still, yeah, carbon goes up in the out. atmosphere. Along it's, with it's, that, there's also something else in the atmosphere that we constantly put back into our soil where we shouldn't be. Mm. Nitrogen. Yeah, absolutely. Well, 78% of what we breathe is nitrogen. And mm. of course, it's one of the reasons why when we have a thunderstorm mm. um, and, and lightning, yeah. particularly, and, and a heavy bout of rain straight after is that it, it changes the um, nitrogen in the air mm. to a soluble format. And that's why you get that sudden burst that's the growth. of growth. So just and, and way back in the, the war years, yeah. Second World War years, uh, a German scientist worked <laughs> out how to capture the nitrogen, nitrogen. In, the, in the air and convert that into a, a form solid. to fertiliser. As a solid? Well, it was actually used to make bombs. 
And of course, they had an excess of it, and then they put it all together with made it as an phosphorus and <laughs> potassium. <laughs> it turns it into a fertilizer. And gone, hey, look what this does. Yeah. <laughs> makes things grow. It yeah. also kills them, but it makes them grow. That's first. the problem. You and know. that's what's happening. Short term fix, everything's growing really fast, but yeah. long term is we've killed, we've killed off yeah. all living organisms, yeah. and our soil becomes self reliant. Yeah. One of the things that I've, and I think I've said this before to you, um, as a young yeah. lad, Dad used to drive down K Road, Duncan Road, mm. to go to the, the farm, uh, farmers markets, or markets there mm. as such, uh, farmers, sorry. And you had your cabbages, cauliflowers, and it would sting to the heavens, really, mm. as you drive down. You know, the tractor will be ripping through, as monoculture does, and what they do in, in planting. But behind that, then, they were using man manures. And uh, look, I'm going back 50 mm. plus years, but they use manures, and mm. you can smell it. And behind the manures, what would you see from the sky coming down? Birds. The birds. Yeah. You don't smell it anymore, mm. and you don't see it anymore. You know, the only thing that follows birds down, uh, follows the tractors down there, that's a, dust. Dust. That's all there is now. Yep, that's it. You know, there's, no, there's nothing have, alive. You know, and it's great to think that the synthetic fertilizer, chemical fertilizers, are doing a quick fix for your garden. But long term, I've seen, I've seen more times than not, plants destroyed, garden beds destroyed, the micro um, flora in the soil mm. completely decimated because of the excessive use. Yeah. And you, can, and you can't re-educate them all in one go. This is just generally speaking. I mm. think it's going to take a couple of generations. Mm. I'm beating the drum. You're beating the drum. We've got a little sample of saw that you just saw now with all, all those little um, hyphase, which is yeah. part of the mycelium networking. Mm. And they are one sixtieth of the size of your typical finest root hair on your plant. Yeah. And then off that live all the microbes that do the exchange. So. The high phase, basically the conductor between your plants. Well, it's a, it, yeah, it, it's like a tunnel. Yeah. And 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 what what is amazing is that they actually interconnect from root zone to root zone different plants. So, so when a, when you have diversity in your garden, mm. monocultures are not good because no. there's competition. Yeah. So microbes are competing with the same microbes for the same things. And you see, same with yeah. fungal networks. Yeah. So. To have diversity in your garden, a bit like a food forest. That's it's, why it's the like Amazon clear, forest, you put forest the, never been fertilised. And have a look at it. Yeah, no, no best, no disease. Nothing, nothing. It's all perfectly well. balanced. Yeah, yeah whereas right. if you go to Oakley, there's all Greeks there. <laughs> it's a little bit off balance there, folks. But, that's, um, but I get that. That's what's happening. So what, we, what we're saying here is colonate the microbes and fungi in your soil. You, you absolutely, you, you've got to do whatever you possibly can yeah. to, to, to assist... To, the soil, life, the life, life of soil. in the soil, yeah. and and it's, and that's I the was other out one. there with this yesterday. Yeah, I mean, you only have to read the first line of it. You know, eco butch is a biostimulant made from organic protein, which has been broken down into peptides and amino acids. There you go. That's perfect. Yeah. All right for and if you're thinking how do I how do I get you know the microbes active, mm -hmm. water your garden, your soil. Mm. You water know your soil. Mulch your soil. Don't leave it covered, uh, uncovered. You yeah. know, don't turn your soil over. You possibly can. Yeah. And when you get the earthworms mobile in your soil, mm -hmm. and you've got all of the functioning bacteria and fungi, you won't need to worry about turning the soil no. over. They'll do that for you. Yeah. You know, I that's know. what makes good, healthy soil. And to understand the quality of your soil, is just put a you know a garden fork in and lift it up, and, and then just study that shovel's worth or garden fork. Well, worth. speaking of quality, yeah. um, you know, it's one thing to be talking about you know um, growing your own food and so mm -hmm. forth versus buying it and when you are relying on others to grow your food mm -hmm. particularly in mass mm -hmm. they have really no other choice than to grow it the way they've always grown oh, no. it yeah that's right grown it in monocultured yeah. crops feeding it with yeah, you industrializing know, our food system that's that's the problem that's what's happened it's disconnected yeah. us from our food and but it's also disconnected the plants from all the valuable things that we should yeah. be getting in cool. our in our um, in our it's diets. not the farmers, it's the control freaks and oh, other farmers, basically, who are turning around saying, try these photo lines. Because that's all they did in the early days. They walked around as a sales rep to say, try, try this, this stuff, of course. have a that's look and see how it goes. The yeah. farmer's going, he's struggling yeah. or she's struggling to yeah. grow. Oh, put you more know, of this on. Put it on, yeah. the stuff is just jumping out of the ground. Right. We have, we're ignorant or naive yeah. to the fact that the life in the soil's been destroyed. Yeah. In the process of doing that, you know, and I'm, I'm calling it as it is. If anybody else thinks it's otherwise, come and prove us wrong. Mm. I mean, we're no scientists or anything what? in that respect, but we have enough um, exposure and experience one, one to the, of the world. One of the things that I've learnt um, in all of this study yeah. is that you can actually test yeah. <laughs> the plants to see how healthy they are. Okay. And um, this is called a refractometer. This is a refractometer, so it yep. refracts... It reflects, refracts light. Light. So it, through it knows... a liquid. 
Okay, so you need the liquid. Do you want me to squeeze some juice out of me? No, no, no. Oh, you're not doing me, Ali Plants? No, I need the plant. <laughs> so, so, what are you getting? Let's get a, a basil leaf. Have a look at this. This is a little tool, so it's like a little telescope. Oh, yeah, you got it's um, calibrated. Yep. The bricks. We're measuring the bricks percentage. Yeah. So we go from zero to thirty, um, and zero to twenty degrees Celsius. Okay. So what do you got there? So we've got basil. Yeah. And we're looking to get a little bit of. You're squeezing it in a juice from the. I'll cover the whole thing. Yep. And put the lid over it, and then hold it up to the light, and tell me what you get. Oh, you need to work on this one, mate. What's its What's its rating meant to be? Do you know? I don't know. I'm about to find out. You got there. So we're looking at, folks. What I'm looking at is a calibration. Now that's not going to change over time that I look through it. No. It's going to sit there. It's going to be at one, two. It's just on three. I don't have basil here. <laughs> of all the things. What's the lowest number it can be? Um, not sure. What do you got there? No, there's no basil on this, unfortunately. Of all the all things. All right. Of all plants you pick, you pick basil, and it's not there. All right. We've got tomatoes. Let's wipe that off. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You got tomatoes, so we can do the tomatoes. So yep. the basil was at three. So this is a chart that tells you what it should be. The average, good yep. and excellent. So apples, for example, okay, tomatoes. Well, you go and get a leaf. Tomatoes sit, folks, at poor is a reading of four. Average is six. A good reading is eight. And excellent is 12. If you want to see that there, that's what it is. So, four, six, eight, and oh, twelve. The other problem I'm going to have is I'm going to need to wash that. All right. Because that'll affect the cross contamination, eh? Not really. Yeah, well, it will, but. Be better than nothing. So, fast tracking it here, folks. Ideally, just run it through some water, dry it properly, so we don't have um, crossover. Okay, here we go again. Is there any juice left of it? There. I'll just let it go. Chlorophyll in that, eh? Yeah, I'm not going to let you touch it this time. Does it, does it have to cover the whole screen? Push the screen over it. Make, It'll make do it. There it you. is. So, your tomatoes, my friend, at the moment, if I was to do go by the chart, tomatoes, four is poor, six is the average. Eight is good, and anything above eight is excellent. And you are creeping on ten, just on ten. You're a nine and a half. Serious? Ten. What you? <laughs> you what you didn't think you could grow tomatoes? That's good. That's good. Are you, no, that's excellent. That's excellent. There you go. If you want you know to why see. that? You know why that's excellent? Why is that? Because all that soil in there has been soil. The super feeded black fruit. Black no, no, no. <laughs> Got it. Okay. Black fruit. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, and compost. Compost. That's all. From, compost. Um, from, from the my, compost. From oh, my, your compost. No, from my compost. That's it. I'm going to go home and test my ones, my tomatoes. Actually, what I'm going to do is test the ones that got hit by the hailstorm versus the ones inside. So one, of the, one of the things you might find interesting is that um, within minutes of you having applied a, uh, when I say minutes, about 20 minutes, of you having a, applied a foliar feed, yeah. you can retest and you'll see how... Difference. Uh, how much, what the difference is. So, okay. So, so but right, folks, go. Okay. Unfortunately, that's not quite as high as I'd like. What you've got that now? Yeah. Are you, are you disappointed? Oh, well, no, not disappointed. I'm very happy that it's, it's above what, eight. What was tomatoes? 12 is excellent. You were at 10. 10. So, at 12, insect pests yeah. and disease will not touch these plants. So, if we are to work, if we're able to get this, now we can get one of these online, I suppose, the, yep. um, the, the charts. These we should have them available very soon for everybody, folks. Yep. But in the meantime, when we're talking about um, readings, the final reading, if you're saying to me, if you can fall, get your plant to sit under the excellent column, that is self-sufficient, self-reliant against disease. Well, to, to a degree, because what happens is that the sugar content in the, in the plant yeah. is so high that insects can't uh, metabolise or consume. Mm -hmm. The tissue. So think about that. Yeah, it's cell wall thickness and all that stuff going on. But it's the, the sugar content that they, they, just, they, they just can't, cannot, they, they cannot can't deal with. It. Yeah, no. too much sugar. So, and, and which, which is one of the reasons why when I say 
you know, when you've got deficiencies or yellowing leaves yeah. on your plants, is why insect pests move in. Yeah, they do. So sick, they're dying it's disease the work plants. get attacked. Exactly, and they're easy to So if to you've got penetrate. weak plants that are not, you know, uh, got all of the things that they're supposed to be getting, within including reason, all the minerals and, and all the trace reason, minerals. Yeah, because some caterpillars will just chew on the most healthiest of plants as well. But they're a large pest. They're not a... We're not yeah, talking but even then, even then, Rasili, they're saying that you don't... Oh, look, I haven't sprayed. Mm. Why am I making this reference to the, the kale is they're my sacrificial plants. Mm. So they've only gone to the kale itself, and that's the cabbage mm. butterfly, and they've eaten it. The plant's thriving. It's mm. just a, you know, a very sort of Swiss cheddar cheese yeah. leafy plant. Yeah. But even so, it hasn't caused the plant to go backwards, but everything else is mm. thriving. Mm. Not a single blemish, not a single, single mark. Even though they've been hit by hailstones, mm. uh, the damage is there on the stems where they've got bruised, but everything else is thriving. So mm. the, the, the micro colony, the, 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 soil, the microbiology in the soil, in the soil is soil helping is you out immensely, yeah. Totally help, helping out. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm overwhelmed with the fact that I've been able to grow something like that this time of year. So, in soil, there's good bacteria and bad bacteria. And the good bacteria you populate your root zones with, the rhizosphere, yeah. fight off the bad bacteria because they've got a reason. Mm. They don't want the bad bacteria yeah. to move in. And in, in anaerobic soils, which are yeah. compact, wet soils, yep. That th there's no aeration in, and there's generally no earthworms in. And that's where the get attacked by yeah. bad bacteria, and they beat the good bacteria down every time. Yeah. Whereas in a healthy aerob aerobic soil, yeah. that is good airflow. Good airflow. The good bacteria win every time. Yeah. Likewise with the fungi, and and there's a reason why you want to keep that sort of that that uh, balance. that that balance in the soil mm. up up to date as possible yeah. by regularly using, using biostimulants. Biostimulants of some sort. Now it can be worm juice. Yeah, it can be. It can you be don't necessarily it can be a seaweed, it could be liquid garlic, it can be um, sea salt. Yeah. They're biostimulants as well. Yeah, look, there's, lot, there's lots of I mean you can yeah. make up your own plant yeah. teas. Yeah. You know, you but can. you're flying a little blind when the science yeah. hasn't been done on them. Yeah, exactly. You know, you're not yeah. never show, sure how strong yeah, or weak it. they are. And, and if you're not sure that's why we have products much, on yeah. the market so, for you. So if you're using and that's right. Use a balanced product yeah. that's done the science. Yeah. If you're going to use something that you've made, dilute the hell out of it. You know, make sure that it's a... only small parts per million. And you work your you way know, up to a larger that's right. quantity. So you don't overdo it and, yeah. and cause another problem. You know, so, so overfeeding with good organic matter and, and biostimulants can be just as bad as yeah, absolutely. It's over fertilising. It's a like absolutely. You know, you can have a glass of wine. You can have ten glasses of wine. How are you going to end up with either way? Yeah. You know, you can see the results there. That's the same with fertilising. But it's also, you know, um, you know, populating your mulch mm. with a biostimulant. Mm. Mm. Water the whole mulch. No, no. Don't don't just water the plants. No, no, no. no. That's water, the hardest thing we've got, we've, got, to do. we've got to get out. Yeah, we've got the wrong hats on. Yeah, so you know, and, and old habits are very hard to break. And, and I guess that's what I'm trying to say is that you need to think about your gardens very, very differently than you yeah, have. It's not, don't look at your plants when you're looking at your garden yeah. only. So don't only look at the plant, look yeah. at the soil you know, below. Yeah, when, when you've got a deficiency, mm. yellowing and so forth on the leaves, think about the soil Yeah, that's what's, and, and the what, microbe. The what micro, would, yeah. What's missing in the soil for it to be doing that? The microbiology. That? The reason I st stood that up there is just to demonstrate the stem of a plant, basically. So if we go through small, medium, large plants, this is a small seedling. Ignore the diameter of it, it's just there as a prop for the purpose of the demonstration. So the seedlings here, how far out should we water, really, at the end of the day? There, because the roots are so small, or should we hide A seed or a seedling? Seedling. This is a small seedling. Well, a, a, a small seedling and or seed yeah. directly over the top of it for its initial planting. Yes. And then water around it as well. Yeah. And so that, that actually sends out biochemical messages mm -hmm. to the microbes inside. And if you put a biostimulant that, in it, it's like but the invitation that's what I'm trying card. To say. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, don't ever put a seed or a seedling in the ground without watering it in with, with water, something like that yeah. eco, uh, eco, eco butch. butch. Yeah. Or, or, or liquid fertiliser of some sort. No, 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 not a fertiliser. No, <laughs> no, no, not a fertiliser. That's it. It's a, a stimulant. A biostimulant. Exactly. A biostimulant. In a seed, particularly a seed, when it starts, it doesn't need food. No. The first two leaves that appear, or single leaf, depending yeah. upon what they are, are called cotyledons, and they have all the nourishment that that seedling needs until it's Ready to got its on. first pair or first yeah. adult leaf. Exactly. And that's when you can start moving. Initially, though, you really need to get that biostimulant round so that the root zone, the rhizosphere of the young seed or seedling gets populated with microbes and all fungi. the microbes that you need for healthy plant exactly. growth. So if you do water at least, 
you know, a foot around for a small seedling, you're hydrating the soil to invite the microbes to correct, colonise. Correct. Then you go to the next size, and obviously from there on, if it's a larger plant, a six inch pot or eight inch pot, yeah. you would do the same. So your watering cycle or yeah. a circumference will be and, a lot larger. And, and if you take my advice, yeah. mix up your watering cans and get out there and water the whole bed. Exactly. And, and get it all exactly. bioactive. I mean, the whole point of this is, and I was going to say this before, that the, the, the hyphae network or fungal network, mycelium network, mm -hmm. whatever you want to call it, interconnects with different root zones of plants. And the more diversity you have, the better diversity of the microbes you have in the soil. And the more chance of them sharing some of the things that they build in excess. Sometimes, you know, and, and plants can't move. And, and that's mm. something we've got to think about. And yeah. there is no deficiencies in soil. It's all there. Mm. But the fungal network might, might allow yeah. it to get something that's 100 metres away that's not anywhere near where the plant needs. Yet it gets... I'll tell you something else that I've, I've discovered. <laughs> they send messages about pests and disease. It's, it's, so, in a, it's, and, yeah. and this is proven study yeah. that they introduced a pest to a plant that they know switches on a particular gene yeah. and and puts a chemical into the plant yeah. when it's under attack. Yes. At the edge of a forest. Yes. This is over in Germany. Yeah. And they tested 300 meters away, like yeah. only a matter of hours. Yeah. That plant and that was that those plants they had the prior did not have the gene switched on, and within hours the whole all, the whole lot had the gene yeah. switched on. So the whole forest and, went into. And the um, only way they, the, the only thing they could put that down to was that the fungal network had sent out those biochemical messages that we've got a pest in the in the forest, <laughs> and out that and out that message went, and they all switched on their defence systems. That's nature's telephone that particular. system, basically. So, we're not as clever as we once thought, yeah. and it's not really now until... We're probably the dumbest creature and, and, on the planet. And, and at the end of the day, I mean, we're still learning so much because of yeah. the, you know, the, the, the studies that are being yeah. conducted on it. Um, all I can it's say is watch problem. this space. It totally, folks. So I, it's I, not I think, above ground, it's all about below yeah, the ground. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. I think that this, this topic is going to be one of the biggest subjects of our time in due course. It has to be. Oh, look... 60 years of topsoil left, mate. I mean, you can't... I get that. You know, and it frustrates me because we still excavate and we, we, we move it around and we, mm. you know, turn over in the modern cultural world. Mm. We are going to be on the topic of soils forever and a day, folks. And what I'm going to be doing every morning, as Craig does with his, his own post, is talk about the benefits of soil and living mm. soil and what to do with it and how to keep it alive. Yep. And if you're ever going to do anything to your garden, but is populate your soil, bring it to life. Your soil is the largest living organism, I suppose, that we have. And in, within that, there are colonies upon colonies, billions upon trillions of microbes, and they could all live within a teaspoon. Yep. I mean, well, there's more. There's more life above the, uh, below the soil than there is yeah, above, and yeah. there's more weight of measured life below the soil by a gastronomical amount. Mm. Eighty percent of the weight of living things on the earth is below the soil. Mm. 80%, that includes fish, humans, all animal yeah. and plant life. Yeah. There's more weight in the soil than there it is above. above. That's, that's gobsmacking, respect. given the size of what you saw there. Yeah, respect, you know. respect your soil folks. And, and the, the one single biggest thing you can do for, for, for you and the planet and your gardens is compost. Yeah. Don't throw your green waste out. Even if it's just a heap or a pile up the backyard. And there's nothing you know, wrong with digging a little hole and dropping it into the soil as well. That's, however you do it, however yeah. you do it, it makes no difference how exactly. small a scale it is. It is it's you know, composting. Or, yeah, that's right. And, and you're, getting, you're populating the soil and the compost with the things and that you need that are vital. Life. Everything you need is in your garden. You do not have to bring anything in there. Right. Yes, you want to fertilise extra, keep it organic. Yes, you want to liquid feed, keep it natural and organic. Mm. But you, once you've established that infrastructure of your soil, all you need it to do is maintain it by hydrating it and composting mm. and mulching and avoid digging. And that way you won't have to spray. Because that's one thing I haven't done, apart from the caterpillars that have eaten my kale plant, I have not applied any insecticides or fungicides. Mm. I, I say a lot because of the leaf curl, but that's only one tree. Mm. And you know how many plants I've got in the garden and mm. how big the property is. So we mm. don't spray. You don't mm. need to. Mm. Plants can have, build their own self-defense mechanism in place, providing you give them the tools I remember that the they 12, need. The, the 12 bricks. I'm going to go home now and measure all my bricks and see how many bricks I need. And, and I suppose, look, I mean, you, you put out a, a daily video, yeah, YouTube. Yeah, yeah. 
um, each day, um, and there's plenty of posts in, in emails you exactly. send out. Exactly. And same with you. you do Fo all your follow me on Facebook. Exactly. I mean, I put a daily post out, and a lot of it's about soil. And exactly. Moment, so. so follow both, CraigCastry.com yeah. or yeah. Facebook, CraigCastry at Facebook, and myself. Yeah. I don't know what the names are, but just Google us, you'll find us. Edible Gardens by Craig Castry in Facebook or um, website where the links are anyway. Yeah. CraigCastry.com.au. And the same here, VasilisGarden.com yeah. for all your great products and advice. Yeah. Whatever you need, you know where we are, folks. Yeah. From me and Craig, Marisi.